got that little uh, prop wine at the tips. Love it. Hello and welcome to HobbyKing.com. My name is Stuart and I'm here to present to you these two brand new models from HKing. This is the HKing Yak 11. Now these are 1450 millimeter models and being under the HKing brand, uh, just to explain a little bit of the backstory there, with HKing where uh, it's a brand that enables, enables us to take on existing models that you may have seen before, make improvements to them, uh, do them in you know, much better schemes and present them to you. And that's exactly what we've done here with the Yak 11. Um, you may have seen it out on the market in various uh, guises in the past, but uh, we brought it in under the HKing umbrella and we've made quite a few improvements and changes to it. And I'm here today to talk you through those changes on the bench before we then go out and fly the models for you. Now you'll see there's two very different schemes. That's the most obvious difference between the two versions. We have a true scale uh, warbird scheme. This is based on a full size that flies in Germany. And this is a fantasy racer scheme. Uh, it's like a mock Strager type scheme, but applied to the, to the Yak airframe. And it looks very, very good too. Um, so we're appealing to different, two different types of uh, customers, pure war, uh, warbird and scale types, and then maybe for the more of the sports flyer, those guys that might like EFX races and, and, and models like that, but want a bigger model that's just as fast, but has flaps and retracts and looks that much more like a real aircraft. Now the Reno version or the racer version of the Yak 11 comes out the box uh, painted uh, and with the white and um, with some pinstriping applied but all the uh, sponsored markings that you see down the side and the uh, the numbers on the tail and on the wing they're provided in the box we provide you a whole set of numbers so you can choose your own race numbers and then you can choose to apply uh, what brand of sticker or what stickers, uh, their water slide decals, what brands you want to apply yourself or even maybe you've got some stickers from other companies you want to put those on too. I've left it kind of up to your own imagination to make this uh, you know, sponsored by however you wish in this fantasy racing realm. The Yak 11 uh, Warbird version comes out the box with the uh, decals pre-applied and pretty much exactly as you see it here. All right, so the, one of the core differences, not, not just in the scheme, obviously this is the Warbird, this is the Fantasy Racer one, but is in the uh, power setup. They both have a, a Turnergy a Hobby King a 95 amp speed controller, which is mounted right up the front here, but they have different KV motors. The physical size of the motor is the same, but the KV is different. On the Warbird version, you've got a 410 KV, and that is rocking a 17. Let me just double check that because I've got the quick setup guide, and that's something I want to mention too. There is a quick setup guide supplied in the box, and on my digital version of that, I can confirm the Warbird version has the 1710 uh, two blade propeller provided, whereas the uh, Reno Fantasy Ray version that has a higher kv so you want a smaller propeller on that because it is that much more powerful and faster so this is a 550 kv and it is a 16.6 propeller um both come with spinners and the props but uh thing to mention is you definitely want to check the balance on both versions out the box uh, any imbalance in the spinners and the propeller will immediately resonate into the airframe which you do not want so i absolutely recommend this and we say it in the manual as well do check the balance of the prop and spinners before you power these things up and go off and fly. So what you'll see in the air is that the performance is excellent, first of all, on the Warbird one, more than scale and certainly fine for it. Um, but the race version is just that much quicker. And that really talks to the type of models they are. This is a Warbird version. This is a sports scale race version. So you'll see that difference in the air. Again, both 6S setups and they have a uh, Hobby King Turner G 95 amp speed controller in both of them. And this is uh, gonna be powered by 6S, which I've already told you, but it's a 5,000 milliamp power. And you'll see when we get out to the field, you want, that, you want the heaviest 5,000 milliamp power you can find and you push that pretty much all the way forward. Now, as to the uh, differences from previous versions you may have seen on the market, I'll go through those very, very quickly now. So if I turn this one over, the big difference is that the uh, struts now have oleos on them and we'll get some footage of that. So it just takes a lot of the bounce out uh, when you're taxiing and when you're uh, on your takeoff run or your landing run. 
Also, the geometry of the retrack has been improved, so nosing over with this is pretty much a thing of the past. Um, we're on a wet grass field here, but you'll see they still handle extremely well. You've got to obviously treat it as a warbird because they will have quite a bit of rotational torque when you power up, especially on the uh, faster uh, war, uh, Reno, sorry, on the Reno version. But you just fly it like you would any warbird when taking off. Hold in some uh, right rudder, hold in some air up elevator, gradually feeding the power, and away you go. But again, we're going to show you uh, these models flying very, very soon. Now, in terms of assembly, very minimal assembly. The tail screws on, the wing is two part. There's a substantial wooden spar in the middle. It's a wing joining spar. What I recommend is that you do glue the two wing halves together and you actually use the fuselage with the, the wing bolts. There's four wing bolts. You use that as a jig to set the wing whilst you're gluing, uh, whilst the glue is drying. That in, uh, ensures everything is straight and true. The tail plane just bolts on. It's got a uh, controllable, sorry, a steerable tail wheel, which is linked to the rudder. And it's got ailerons, rudder, elevator, and flaps, of course as well as throttle. Now on the canopy access to these models, slightly different. Um, on the Warbird version, it retains the traditional split canopy, which allows you to keep that uh, scale uh, aerial at the back there. And that is how the hatch comes off. And there's a little latch, a sprung loaded latch at the front. And if I raise the nose here, you'll get some idea of the inside of the model. So I've got my receiver mounted on the side here. Here's a part of the PCB. Uh, servo connectors for the wings that I, uh, I mentioned earlier and already installed because uh, we're about to go fly is the heaviest 5,000 milliamp hour sixes I could find which in this case is a Rhino 5,000 milliamp hour. Um, very very spacious inside, very easy to access, very easy to maintain and I've got my six channel receiver just on the side of the fuselage here. So that's the Warbird version then the hatch just goes on like so, flick the latch at the front and she is in. Slightly different setup on the hatch and canopy on the uh, Reno version. If I bring this forward here, same latch at the front, and then if I pull this down, you'll see that the canopy is actually one piece. We've removed the aerial from the back. And the reason that we've done that, um, the insides of course are the same. So if I put the canopy back on here, I'll explain why. This being that much more high powered, if the canopy had have been split at the back here, what I was finding in early development of uh, the H-King version was the air was getting under here and it was pushing the canopy off. So it's now a complete one piece, so it really streamlines that operation. And one final little detail, the pedo tube that's supplied of each of them is uh, magnetically held, so that makes that nice and convenient too. Uh, all around, they look stunning um, in these two schemes, I think, and I think you will agree. They both fly exceptionally well. We're going to Put, put them both through their paces now in the uh, following flight video. Um, and they assemble very, very easily out of the box. And it's just a stunning aircraft. And, you know, a little bit uh, unusual uh, compared to, say, the Mustangs and Spitfires that you usually see. 1450 millimeter sp uh, span. The wing comes off very easily with those uh, four retaining bolts. So it's very easy to transport too. Uh, but that said, is that a size, but it's still quite a lot of uh, presence in the air. It flies like a much bigger model. The models have got the battery in, so there's pretty much nothing now stopping us from going to uh, fly these for you now. It's a little grey, sure. I mean, it's very representative of the type of weather you get in the Northern Hemisphere this time of year. Uh, there's a little bit of wind and uh, it's a little bit drizzly, but the grass is wet, short and muddy. But you'll see, in spite of that, that they still handle the ground very, very well. And in the air, yeah, they're amazing, you'll see. So let's get on with the flight review of the new 1450 millimeter Yak 11s from HK. Okay, so I've got my two lovely Russian ladies in front of me. We're gonna go with the uh, Warbird version first. Take it up, show you the ground handling, show you those oleos working, sub oleos. Uh, I'll, I'll explain it why in a minute. Um, ground handling, how to taxi, how to take off with uh, these types of models, get into the flying, and then we'll land the Warbird one and do the exact same thing with the more, uh, the, the faster uh, Reno Racer, fantasy, fantasy Reno Racer version of the H-King Yak 11. Now, if you come forward just quickly, First of all, you'll see we've got a pilot's perspective for you. We've got a cool new camera in there, so you'll get to see the benefits of that. I just take the hatch off here. You can see that's my um, 5,000 milliamp hour 
6S all the way forward, as far forward as I can get it. You can even fly these on, um, I think uh, some people here have been flying them on 6 and 7 thousands, right? So right. it's got the uh, capacity for a bigger pack for sure, um, but the hatch goes on backwards like so. And uh, I don't know if you can see it, let's give you a better view. So I am going to, so this is, this is the sub oleo that I mentioned. So it's not a full oleo here, it's a sub oleo here. And that allows for just a little bit of compression. If I compress that, you can see that there? Yeah, got it. Working nicely. It does help and it gives it that extra cool factor as well. So the grass is wet. It's a bit muddy, it's a bit bumpy. We'll come back to the Reno version shortly. But if I, I am armed, I'm gonna go in high rates on the elevator and low rates on the rudder. And I wanna hold full up elevator to keep that towel down. So I maintain control of the, uh, of the model whilst taxiing. And then slowly apply power. You see it's taxiing really, really nicely. Keeping the, uh, the towel down, which is important. The wing is a little bit diagonal. Don't think I need any flaps to take off. Now we have all warbirds. And it's especially true for the Reno version because of the power of it. You'll need to apply a little bit of right rudder uh, as you feed in the throttle to counter the rotational torque. And you want to be holding in some up elevator and then uh, gradually release the uh, elevator as you increase the throttle. Let's see that in action. Ready? Ready. Okay, all right. Wind is good, sun is good. So I'm holding in some elevator. Let the towel come up, slowly increase power, and then catch it and she's up. That was a no flat takeoff. Straight away, you can see she's cruising really, really nicely. I'm at about a third throttle now. You can see the LEDs working. I'll do a slow pass this way. How's that on camera? Gorgeous. There she is. She flies really well slowly too. Okay, I am going to go up. That's the full power climb out. Just see the red LED there on the, uh, on the wing. Slowly roll it over. And then full power. I'm going to keep full power as I come around. How's that looking on camera? Very nice. All right, I've backed off the throttle now. LED's helping in that light. Full power now. Tracks. Beautifully. I'm going to keep it on power. Just, uh, just back off just a little bit in the turn just to save the energy. Full power down the strip. Now. It's got a really really locked in feel you put it in a direction and it stays in that direction it's right. too quick for me i missed it oh you missed it <laughs> all right let's do another one then all right slow on this thing get it in frame there it is see that landing light on the early uh, on the leading edge always on uh you could i guess you could put that on a switch if you wanted to right i'm gonna do a full power pass give you a, i guess i could be a little further away this time yeah all right full power down the strip How's that? Nice. Yeah, it's just a little bit of opposite rudder. When you do that pass, climbing up, that's full power. Gonna roll off the top. It's very, very locked in. Full power downwind, and then gonna bank away. Ready? Ready? So, so solid. All right, let's take it up and give it a little bit of the aerobatics here. I'm gonna flick into uh, mid-rate on the aileron. We'll just do simple stuff like rolls. Ready? Gonna roll left. Right. Of course, we've got that on board as well if you missed that on the main cam. I'm going to do a farmer pass, so a bit more rudder when I put the wing over. Ah, oh, grooves going up, 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 up. We'll do a stall turn off the top here. Lovely. Gonna, I don't know. I was going to roll, but I didn't have enough height. Okay. Now let's, uh, well, I do a loop, right? I do a loop. Coming in for a loop. A little bit of opposite rudder when you're feeding power. How's that on camera? Very nice. That light is shining beautifully in this uh, light we've got now. Really, I can really see it well. I hope you guys can too. I'm going to do mid flaps now. Bring it in. Leave the speed off downwind. I'm going to keep mid flap on and I'm just gonna cruise it slow. Look at this. This is really, really slow. 
Light showing nicely. Mid flaps all the way here. You ready? Just gonna bring it nice and slow and steady. Oh, good? Good. Now power on, a little bit of right rudder, and away she goes. Gonna roll up and round. Do another pass, then I'll come around and do a better loop, I think. A little bit of a farmer pass, so crank over on the ailerons, then opposite rudder. Oh. <laughs> Such a nice grooving warbird. It's so, so locked in this one. Uh, I'll start the uh, loop a little further away. Okay, full power, level, and looping up. Easing up on the elevator, big as you like, easing off the power at the top, bringing it out, and I'm going to do a slow roll at the bottom. Oh, nice, beautiful. I'm going to do another slow pass this way, four flaps this time downwind, so there's not much wind. The sun's going to be glistening really nicely. Uh, on the side there, I think. A little bit more power here. Oh, look at the sun on the canopy. Oh. Nice. <laughs> I'm going to keep the flaps on and do another uh, low, slow pass. This is full flaps now. Yeah, shall, I, shall I put the gear down too? Do it. Maybe we do a touch and go actually. A bit more power. And you just don't want to go too nose down and then flare, flare. And then apply power. There she goes. So if there was any concerns about it not handling the grass, you can see that it absolutely does. And now I'll bring it around to do a landing because we've got the other one to fly too. Full power. Whoa, what a screamer. Can you give me a stall as well? Oh yeah, let's explore that. Stall. Just very quickly. Okay. So most, there it is. Okay, so Got I'm it. full up. And there we go. When it stands still, it rolls out a bit and it stalls basically because you're standing still but you saw it was dead still so i'll bring it around now to the right we'll land it because we got the faster one the reno racer uh mid flaps i think gear down keep in some power and then you don't want to touch down with the nose down you want to try and do a three pointer really it flares nicely reducing power keep flaring keep flaring oh there's a rolling landing but look no hint of nosing over there. Gorgeous. Quite high rates on the elevator now. You can see it taxis really well. I can just about see those sub audios doing their thing. To stop the towel from bouncing up too much, you do need to hold full up elevator. So that was the Warbird version. I'm gonna give you a little demonstration of the faster Reno one now, and you'll see what both, uh, both these lovely ladies can offer. Okay, so. Reno Racer, Fantasy Reno Racer version now. Uh, you'll see that it's just that much quicker. Very different color scheme as well. And uh, I'm gonna taxi around behind me so you can see the ground handling again. Again, on that note, you wanna be in high rates on the elevator. Let's keep that towel down. And uh, here we go. Keep that towel planted on the floor. Bring it around into wind. Not that there's much. Take it a bit further out so you can see it rotating pretty much as we get to camera. I'm still holding full up elevator, handling the grass like a champ. Okay, we're good? I'm good. No flaps to take off, not really needed. Watch out for the torque though. Slowly apply uh, throttle, holding elevator as you start, and then ease off the elevator, let the towel come up, and then just let it rotate off. Here it goes up, rock solid. Straight as a die, you'd think it's got a gyro in. It hasn't. It just flies well by design. This is a quarter throttle, if that. Coming past. Light showing up well. Oh, all right. Let's get it up. And I'll do a pass. I'm climbing now at half throttle and do a full power pass. You ready? Ready. Okay, here she comes. What a great sound too. Keeping on full power as I bank round here. You hear that? No. <laughs> oh, power until the sun goes down. Speaking of which, it still looks very good even in this low light. Full power pass with a little bit of bank over. Opposite rudder. Yes, it's got that little 
uh, prop wine at the tips. Love it. Do another one because it's so good. See how solid it is. Oh, come on. It doesn't get much better than that. See that little landing light? And mid flaps, just like the Warbird version. You can really slow this one down, pretty much do a crawl. Keep a little bit of power on. And we're keep flying it within the parameter of the field here. I'm actually going to go on full flap. Look at that. Going to keep coming around. Flaps, lovely. I'll do another one. Now exit to my left. You're holding in a bit of elevator here. As you bring it around again into wind, keep a little bit of power on in the turn. You don't want to stall it. With those flaps, it will stall just a little bit more. Uh, oh, that's as low as you like. Full power, flaps off. It's a homesick angel. Roll over, ease off the power just to save the G, and then apply full power. Jesus. <laughs> yes. That was quick. I told you she was faster. So if you're looking for you know pure warbird performance, we've got the warbird version for you. But if you're looking for real speed and you're not so much a warbird fan, go for the racer version. It really, really cooks. Do a, a low rate roll now. And this way. Beautiful. It's just such a fun aircraft to fly. Um, it's good slow, it's good fast, super, super steady, low flat, uh, low speed, low power, no flaps this time. Keep a little bit uh, the nose up. And bring it around, give a roll off the top. Stunning scheme on this, it works. This fantasy scheme, so it's from a Strega, uh, the Mustang but it works really well on this yak. Remember, of course, with this, you can put your own racing number on. You've got a choice of 10. I went with lucky number seven. Oh, looking so good. All right, so I think it's about time to bring it around for a landing, but of course, I can't resist one more fast pass. A little bit of opposite rudder. All right, so let's bring it in for a landing. Gears down mid flap you want to keep the nose just a little bit below the horizon i'm about a third throttle now you want to flare as you get to the bottom and then slow the speed flare 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 there we go now a little trick what i did there because i was a little bit nose forward i just you may have heard i immediately flicked into higher rates on the elevator just to make sure that tail stays planted down and a turn very nice let's bring it in Light's working very, very well. She's a good looking bird, isn't she? Absolutely. All right, so. Disarmed. Disarmed. Now, um, let's reset my timer. Uh, reset timer. I was at a timer of seven minutes. I just reset it. I was uh, about five minutes into that. Let's see how much is in the pack. Then we'll wrap up this video. All right, do you have a sale checker? Yes, I do. See that? 31, you got that 31, 32%? Yeah. Right. Left in the pack. That's after a five minute flight of mixed throttle use. So you can see it's got great uh, flight performance as well as flight duration. Sorry about the full size. And there you have it. Let's bring it back over and sign off for this one. Okay, so there you have it. There are two lovely Russian ladies for you. The Yak 11 from HKing. These are 1450 millimeter. Run on 6S 5000s. You've got the uh, Fantasy Reno racer version. And then you've got the Scale Warbird version. Depending on uh, what type of model you like to fly, you can sell them. They fly extremely well, really, really well, both uh, fast and slow. Of course, the racer version is particularly fast and um, a very well behaved, very sturdy and a much improved on the ground, especially handling uh, Warbird, tail, tail Dragger Warbird. So we've got something for both camps. Check them out on our website now. Uh, there will be some spare parts available. These are certainly available in both the uh, US and the EU warehouse, and I think probably Australia and International too. Check these out on the site, links below. 
please leave any comments below. We always read them, we always appreciate it. And we look forward to seeing you in the forums and in the flying fields with your new HKing Yak 11s. Until next time, I'll say goodbye. <laughs>